what I remember is sitting up on that panel when JJ turned to me and he just was so delighted in saying, the audience is so smart. Wait, if the audience is so smart, then why do you hit on them all the time? I sat down with George for a long meeting before we ever put pen to paper on this final episode. So we had the benefit of his thoughts. We took a lot of notes. <laughs> A lot of notes? Did you use any of them? Probably just, main character is female. The fans really don't want to know. You want to go into the theater and be surprised and see things for the first time. And Oh boy, we were surprised. You don't want every single thing revealed. It's a long process, but we always look for that core group to kind of arrive at a solidarity in a decision. And we got to that on this pretty quickly. That's probably why it was so bad. Glad you aren't ruining Marvel too. Well, we know from my one video on the MCU, I don't think it's that great. But the last few movies, excluding Captain Marvel, have actually taken a lot of those complaints and fixed it. We have made countless complaints about Star Wars and, oop, oh, no more time to fix it. Well, although this absolute excuse for a filmmaker is still getting a trilogy after making this, I guarantee you it will not be fixed, nor saved. These two are the forerunners for movies recently, and now Star Wars is taking a pause on movies because of the force being female. Well, actually because of bad toy sales, but that's because of the force is female. Marvel doesn't plan on taking any pauses. They killed off a character in Endgame and are now making an origin movie for her, so... Both have started to focus on TV shows for some reason, which is weird since both have not had successful TV shows until The Mandalorian came out. Now Marvel is producing three big shows with famous leads from their movies, while also making MCU theatrical and Disney Plus movies. Yeah, they aren't stopping anytime soon. Half these characters are dead! Star Wars is now making Mandalorian Season 2, the final season of Clone Wars, and a planned Obi-Wan show, which keeps getting delayed and delayed. Poor Ewan. But yeah, somehow these two companies are under one service, and one is thriving, and one is dying. There are many reasons why this is the case, and I'm here to lay it out. Before we start talking about the rise and falls of these companies, we need to know what actually happened in their history. We're gonna start with Marvel. Marvel started as a broke company that leased its characters to other companies. This is like the X-Men and Spider-Man movies. Kevin Feige helped on almost all of these films just as part of his job. He helped create Marvel Studios, which would make movies by themselves with their own characters. They took a loan, which includes certain characters and rights, that would launch the MCU but they wanted someone to start the MCU that had never been on screen before. So they decided to make an Iron Man film. But Iron Man wasn't in the list of characters that they got the loan for, so they weren't allowed to use any of the loan money. Kevin and the rest of the Marvel Studios raised all the money and made Iron Man. And, well, it was a success, and Marvel was in business. Shortly after, Disney bought Marvel for $4.1 billion, alongside their toy contract with Toy Viz. They had only made two movies, Iron Man and the Hulk. They finished Thor and Captain America was the first Disney produced MCU movie. Kevin is still in charge to this day. Marvel has started to branch out, now doing shows with a lot of their hero leads while also doing theatrical and Disney Plus exclusive films. Marvel has always been headed by Kevin, but answered to Isaac Perlmutter until a controversy with Civil War where Kevin demanded full control of the MCU so that his vision could be seen. As bad as that sounds, it's actually a good thing. He had a good vision and found many that made that vision possible. He now only answers to Chairman Alan Horn. Marvel has been very successful, especially with its recent Avengers films, and a lot of that goes to Kevin being in control, but not a creative control freak. That's all for them. They have released the Phase 4 slate, which looks somewhat promising, but other than that, yeah, Marvel has been successful. Star Wars. Everyone knows the story of the indie movie from 77 that was super popular. 
George Lucas sold Lucasfilm LTD for $4 billion, just slightly less than Marvel. They also bought the rights to distributing toys for Star Wars. Lucasfilm also included Indiana Jones and a few other of George Lucas' films. When bought, Kathleen Kennedy was chosen by George herself to head. She is married to Frank Marshall, so yeah, I think she got chosen because she was one of Lucas' friend's wife. Well, she decided to create the Star Wars sequel trilogy, have JJ be the producer for the films, and kinda sat back and watched the money roll in. She has a ton of quality movies under her belt, including E.T. and the Jurassic Park movies. She helped found the company Amblin Entertainment and worked with Spielberg a lot. She rejected all of Lucas's film scripts for The Force Awakens, managed to ruin every good thing about TFA in The Last Jedi, and managed to ruin the whole Star Wars story in The Rise of Skywalker, and managed to make George Lucas mad. How? This is his baby. How did you make him mad? Oh, this is how. She made Solo, a movie no one wanted, and Rogue One, another movie no one wanted. She produced The Mandalorian, but allegedly is banned from the set of season 2, and fans have called for her to quit. She has also made many statements that have made many fans mad, but I'll cover that more in depth later during the Kevin vs. Kathleen section. Disney has put on hold any other Star Wars films because of Star Wars fatigue, and has halted other things such as the Kenobi show. She managed to ruin Star Wars. Yes. I blame her. So do many others. Many things brought up in this history of the companies will be examined later on and compared so that we can see the downfall of Star Wars and the rise of Marvel. First, we should look at the movies themselves though. So, the biggest thing is the core of these franchises. The movies. So, we're going to focus on the movies that Disney made, in Star Wars' case, and the larger ensemble movies in Marvel's case. That includes Civil War, which is basically an Avengers movie. So, starting in 2012 with Marvel's The Avengers and 2015's The Force Awakens. They have very similar cases. Popular got a lot of ticket sales and started off the continuations very well. They also set up for futures with bigger villains and potential arcs for characters. Specifically, the continuation of Earth's otherworldly threats, Captain America and Iron Man being frenemies, and Thor and Loki's continuous struggle to be brothers. Now, some can be solved in the solo films such as Thor and Loki, and we aren't going to focus on that, but the other two are the big ones that focus for the rest of the series. The Force Awakens also starts the story well. Rey and her heritage and her mysterious power. Finn and his desire to be good and wanted. Poe and his desire to beat the First Order. Kylo and his desire to be Vader. All of this is good possible arcs the characters could go on that are all very interesting. They could easily be molded well with the existing characters. Leia could help Poe and Finn, Luke could help Rey, and together they could all help Kylo. Nope. Well, the next movies are worse. Both ride off the success of the last movies and manage to make a lot even though they aren't good. Age of Ultron introduces many new heroes including Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and The Vision. It tested ideas from the comics like Ulysses Claw and the Hulkbuster suit which were more easter eggs than cool moments. They tried world building by using plot points from like other movies like S.H.I.E.L.D. being Hydra and locations like Wakanda but they're again just easter eggs. The villain is a joke and the plot is bad. Rogue One has a lot of the same problems. It introduced a gang of new characters who all die. It tested ideas from the shows and other sources such as Saw Gerrera, but they are just that again, easter eggs. The villain is better, but again just a joke compared to the top tier villains that are even in this movie. The plot is bad, the characters are forgettable, and overall it was an unneeded addition to the Star Wars universe. But both made money even though they were bad, so success? Moving on, the next ensemble movie is Captain America Civil War. Again, it's basically an Avengers movie since it focuses on the Avengers, even though it's technically a Captain America movie. This is the middle point for the five Avengers movies and shows a big turning point for the final stories. The movie added new characters like Spider-Man and Black Panther and introduced new political concepts like how much control the government should have on the heroes. And it's balanced very well alongside the large ensemble of the movie. The movie allowed the writers and directors, the Russo brothers, almost free reign with concepts and ideas, as long as it continued the story that Kevin wanted and had planned. This also showed our main character, Iron Man, as the villain for once, and it was a cool creative concept that was handled well. Overall, a good movie that got a lot of love from the fans. 
This allowed the directors and writers to stay on and continue the great story. TLJ was a disaster. This is also the turning point for the Disney Star Wars movies. The movie in the middle part of the main trilogy, but also used concepts added in Rogue One, mainly hyperspace tracking. But TLJ is a mess the whole time. New characters were also added, Rose and DJ, but DJ isn't in the next movie and Rose but was, but you wouldn't be able to tell. This movie also told about how bad war is, which no duh. Secondly, it also hates on the rich the whole time, which is ironic because it's Disney. But that's all in our TLJ review, so watch that. I want to talk about the real life stuff with the movie. It also gave more free reign to the writer and director, The Ferret. He didn't continue anything that JJ started. He actually killed most of it off. Snoke, Rey, Luke, he killed all of it. It also tried to show our main character as an antagonist, but it doesn't work because it makes no sense. Tony has good motives that are within character, Luke doesn't. The biggest thing is that this movie got a lot of backlash, so Disney went into control freak mode. They fired the original directors for Solo and opposed all of the original writer's scripts for The Rise of Skywalker. This is where the paths split and take two different turns. Disney starts failing in the Star Wars community, making things that people don't want to watch, but Marvel just keeps getting in better. There's a lot of problems with this movie in particular, but that's going to be covered in the producers section again. So moving on. The next movies come out. Infinity War is, well, great. The characters are great, its main character is a well-known villain who people have been waiting to see in the movies, the story is amazing, there are no problems behind the scenes that are well known, and made a ton of money worldwide. It left us on a cliffhanger that made fans want to see the next one, which they did. This was great for Marvel. If this movie was bad, that would not have made Endgame such an epic event. Solo is a much different story. Yes, it's a character people care about, but no one wanted the story. Knowing his background doesn't change his character in other movies. Maybe knowing Black Widow's background is going to change how we look at her, but it won't change her character. Knowing Hans won't change his character nor how we look at him. Well, it surprisingly didn't ruin his character, but it did ruin Lando's. Lando is pansexual with his droid? We didn't need that. There was also a ton of problems behind the scenes with the directors and writing. The original cut was too funny, and they left because of creative differences. The movie released only 4 months after The Last Jedi, and therefore it didn't make money because of it. Yes, Solo did bad because of The Last Jedi. Not because it was a bad movie, it did bad because The Last Jedi wasn't well received. The movies are dying. The Last Jedi didn't do well, although it made money, and Solo showed the decrease in popularity. But, according to the Lucasfilm executives, aka The Force's female, you won't live to see The Last Star Wars film. That's not true anymore. People aren't interested in Star Wars stuff anymore, and I'm going to prove that more again later. Solo was the worst possible thing that showed all the signs. A dying fan base, forced movies that didn't have much quality, and this is a Han Solo movie. A character people cared about. We now have to wait a year and eight months to see episode 9. And boy, I can wait. Here we are, the finales, the last hype movies, literally the endgame for both sagas. I'm hyped for one and hopeful but scared for the other. Avengers Endgame lives up to the hype. Completing character arcs like Captain America and Iron Man's, cool story with time travel that has some plot holes, but the biggest problem with Endgame is its lackluster villain, who is really just another big bad guy. But it made a ton of money and fans loved it, so it was a success. It was a great end for the Infinity Saga. The Rise of Skywalker came out a couple months ago. I really don't even remember what happens. I went back and watched Chef's review so that I could know what actually happens. All I remember is it being horrible. It again has a horrible villain, but also has horrible heroes. A plot hole filled story and stupid concepts. It craps on everything The Last Jedi did and everything the rest of the Skywalker saga did. It capped off at about $500 million only 3 weeks into its running making it Disney's second least successful Star Wars movie. I think it only made money because it was the last of the trilogy and everyone wanted to see how it ended, but once they saw it, they didn't see it again. Endgame and The Rise of Skywalker differ in that. People watched and rewatched and even re-rewatched Endgame. No one rewatched The Rise of Skywalker. No one cared to, no one thought it was worth it, and the ticket sales show it. It also had the second shortest running span right behind The Empire Strikes Back. But Slime Nugget, The Empire Strikes Back is the best one. That's not a determination of quality. Yeah, it's not. I'm not determining quality. I'm determining fan reception. I'm saying it wasn't well received. 
90 days is a lot for a movie to be in theaters back in 1980. Return of the Jedi managed to last for 100 only because it made more money. They aren't measures of quality, they are measures of fan reception. Endgame was well received, The Rise of Skywalker wasn't. And this is because of these two people. Luckily enough, both franchises have been headed by the same person for their whole run. Both names are hopefully household at this time, but Kevin Feige has been running Marvel since Iron Man 1, and since they were bought out by Disney in 2009. Kathleen Kennedy was hired directly by George Lucas when Lucasfilm was bought by Disney in 2012. These two make all the decisions for their companies now, even if Kevin Feige had to answer to someone up until 2015. But the two have very, very different ways of running a company. First and probably most important, there was an idea. From getting the loan, they had a plan, they had an outcome, they had what they wanted to get, and they worked hard on it. It might not seem like that, and things have changed, but Kevin Feige himself has said, I think if you, you listen to the characters I named that we, that we work, are working on currently, and you put them all together, there's no coincidence that that may someday equal the Avengers. They have always had the plan for Infinity War and Endgame. Some things have changed, with directors being fired and rehired, retcons, and little changes from what actually is seen. And Age of Ultron is the best example of this. I said in my last video that Age of Ultron was basically just a big trailer for other movies, and as much as that isn't good, it advertises some of the best movies the MCU has made. Now, maybe some things have gotten creative liberties, but that's only on a movie to movie basis. Like having Spider-Man and Black Panther first show up in Civil War. That was probably never planned, but it happened and it worked, and it worked well. He even fought during that time period to have already Jane the movie because it was part of the overall plot, and if he couldn't have him, he would quit. Now, yeah, that sounds a little crazy, but it was all because Kevin loved it and wanted it to be great. He knew that certain things couldn't hold him back. Because of that, he has managed to stay on until now and has made the most epic crossover of all time, Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. Kathleen Kennedy literally had everything laid out for her. Literally a royal flush. Characters everyone wanted to see again. A saga that left off on a bad note. Scripts from George Lucas himself. You literally had everything going for you. J.J. Abrams was put in to direct and write the first one. Not bad, at least for directing, but the man can't write. The Star Trek movies show this. He's a good director, no doubt, but a horrible writer. So you ignored George Lucas' ideas and made a soft reboot of A New Hope that everyone saw immediately. Yeah, it made money, but so did Captain Marvel. Making money does not equal quality. Anyways, after The Force Awakens, you gave it to Small Face over here, and because there was no outline, he was allowed to do whatever he wants. And as much as I hate him, he's a genius. In one movie, he managed to split the fanbase, ruin characters, and make a movie that was a horrible continuation of what came before. Because of this, Disney wanted as much control over Episode 9 as they could, and they made an even worse movie. Not only did it crap on 8, it crapped on all the other movies. The movie wasn't even JJ's vision. As much of a stunt as he puts on for the audience, Disney did not make the movie that JJ wanted. They edited it, rewrote it, and had a full control over how it was made, because of how much of a disaster Episode 8 was, and how much money Solo didn't make. Kathleen, if you had a plan initially, you wouldn't have to freak out and be a control freak. You wouldn't have to. You can make the movies with quality rather than letting standalone directors make them. Yes, the original trilogy didn't have a plan, but that was because episode 4 wasn't expected to be such a hit. And once episode 4 was, plans were written and rewritten until it was perfect. And their qualities were almost perfect. The next thing about these two that is different is their SJW messages. Now, pointless SJW plugs are very stupid. I hated the one in Endgame because it kind of hurts them. You know, Amy, anytime someone calls attention to the breaking of gender rules, it ultimately undermines the concept of gender equality by implying that this is an exception and not the status quo. What? But at least Kevin Feige is respectable by trying to make well-rounded characters, specifically Black Panther. Captain Marvel was a fluke because for some reason Hollywood can't write female characters, they think the only thing they have to do is make their character female and boom, equality. No, Leia is a good character because of her good motives, great interactions, and overall mindset change. From a preppy, self-centered rebellion general to a helpful, loving sister and wife, she is a great example of a good female character. Rey is a Mary Sue, or blank. Kathleen Kennedy claiming the Force is female is stupid. 
No one said the force is male, and if they did, I'd call them stupid too. The force has no gender. You know, Amy! But Marvel doesn't care to only push the SJW message. They care to push the overall story, and SJW message is secondary. Well, until Captain Marvel came out. Again, a fluke. Other female characters and minority characters were well written and made fine, so they don't have that problem. Star Wars shoves it in your face like it's a Mormon, going door to door. And don't say I'm a racist or sexist because I want good characters. You should agree with me. Just having a female lead is not good enough. You should want a well-written female lead. Just like I want a well-written character because gender nor race nor anything defines a good character. What defines a good character is motives, backstory, change, relatability. Star Wars almost seemed to have a diversity quota because Maz's appearance in The Last Jedi is so forced that it's obvious. With a diversity quota and such being on the table comes the next section. Horrible, hilarious management of the franchise versus the great management of another. This comes in two parts. The first is experience. This is not only his or her experience, but of those they hire. So, their experience. Yes, you could argue that Kathleen Kennedy has worked on many successful films including Jurassic Park, E.T., and Back to the Future. These are all great accomplishments if there were superiors or other people that did everything else. Yes, she has a lot of experience. That isn't what I'm saying. Make sure this is clear. She just had competent workers who cared and were good, but never got the quality experience she needed. Feige, on the other hand, shadowed and worked under Lauren Shore because it would be better for his career than shadowing under his hero, Richard Donner. He understood what he needed to do to get to the places, and it happened. Kennedy just worked with the right people and had the right connections. Those are two different levels of quality. Next, they choose their workers, mainly directors and writers. Now, Feige was a lot harder on writers and directors because he had an overall plan, and he knew exactly what he wanted, which allowed him to pick quality directors and writers. Kevin started with Robert Downey Jr. and John Favreau. From there, he risked it with hiring James Gunn with the Guardians. They picked him because he would do what they said, but also saw his potential. He made a great movie and again, but also because they saw his potential. Tiaki Wadi, Peyton Reed, and most importantly, the Russo brothers. They all worked because they worked with Kevin Feige, not for him and not against him. They made the movies that Kevin was looking for, and if they didn't, they were removed and replaced. As control freakish as it sounds, it works because having a certain level of quality is necessary. Josh Sweden worked for the first Avengers, but not for the second, so he was replaced with the Russo brothers. Kathleen Kennedy hired JJ, who wasn't a bad pick, just a horrible writer, and after making a well-received movie, Small Man was picked for the next one, who doesn't know crap and was a yes-man to all of Kathleen's SJW messages. He literally crapped on the whole saga and did it without a care. Kathleen didn't choose a risky option, she chose someone with no potential who she liked because of his political values and not his ability to write. After the former director quit, they put JJ back in the helm because he made a popular movie, and ended up making an even worse one. Kennedy didn't even attempt to find the right person for the movie, and instead tried to make money without finding quality. With the quality falling, there's a reason for that. Kennedy claimed, there's no source material, we don't have comic books, we don't have 800 page novels. We don't have anything other than passionate storytellers who get together and talk about what the next iteration might be. What? Yes, Marvel had comics that they based their stories off of, but to say there is no source material for Star Wars is a lie. There are tons of former canon comics, books, and even games that could be source material. Just look at this list of books alone! Easy source material. Easy. Yes, there's stuff wrong with these books and their plots, but Marvel changed the comics to work with the story they wanted, and Star Wars? Well, she had no plan, so source material wouldn't actually help. But if there was a plan, source material does exist, and they should have looked into it. Because of this, there are no stories that are tested for what is good and bad, and they made crappy stories. Oops. Oh right, horrible management that somehow doesn't know about the former biggest franchise's multi-layered stories. Yeah, maybe she wasn't correct for the job. Kevin though, he relied on the popular stories and reworked them to work with the overall story, changing what they had to to work off it to make it better. There are so many options that Star Wars had, but nope, no explanation for anything, just remake the originals. Star Wars has decided to stop making movies temporarily because of this term going around known as Star Wars fatigue. Again, what? Star Wars fatigue is not a thing. We are not tired of Star Wars content. We are tired of bad Star Wars content. Emphasis on bad. Because at this point, only 3 of the 11 movies are good. 
No, I don't excuse the prequels because the sequels are far worse. They are all bad movies. Marvel creates two to three movies a year, and most are above average quality, and no one gets tired of them. Or at least not a lot get tired of them. Yes, we discussed the formula, but at least a lot of the characters are well made and everyone making them cares, and they work for the fans. No, not all the fans can be pleased, but it's a business. They need to work like a business. Work for your consumers. All the movies after The Force Awakens have bad reception. Yes, they made money, except for Solo, but that isn't what I'm looking at. I'm looking at fan reception, which in one major form, when does the movie peak? All of the Avengers movies last about 40 to 45 days before peaking. Endgame lasted a little longer, which makes sense, but overall they last about a month and a half. Rogue One lasted 31 days. The Last Jedi, 30. Solo lasted 20, and The Rise of Skywalker lasted 25. 25 days before they started peaking. That's crazy. That's less than a month. Again, no one went back and rewatched these movies. She didn't provide for the fans. I'm not saying that they have to sell out to their fans. I mean, Episode 9 tried doing that and it was a horrible movie. I'm just saying you can't neglect your fans. You can't hire a director who literally craps on the fans. And you can't say, I don't feel that I have a responsibility to cater in some way. I would never say just seize on saying, well, this is a franchise that has appealed to primarily men for many years, and therefore I owe men something. No, you don't owe men anything, but you can't do anything without your biggest fan base, and you can't do anything without crapping on men. Where are all the male role models in The Last Jedi? All the males are subservient to the females. Yeah, the girls have someone to look up to. Even if you made another character who could have just been Leia the whole movie, but yay, female empowerment. Poe is supposed to blindly follow orders because she has purple hair. Finn is wrong literally the whole time during their time on the casino planet. Rey is perfect and Luke is wrong, so you can't look up to him anymore. And Kylo is evil, so I wouldn't look at him as a role model. You can't do that. Not saying you owe men anything, and I never will. Just saying know your fans and be equal. There's a problem that a lot of liberals have. They want equality, but it sounds more like they want white males to have less. Equality is 50-50, but they cheer when women have more than 50% because it's females. Kevin has balanced that well. They have put female role models into the overall story. Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, Phoenix, The Wasp, all good characters that have actual good arcs and are good role models alongside the male role models. I think the best balance of this is in Black Panther. The sister is extremely smart and works with the brother well. She has a similar struggle and helps her brother and is very well done. No SJW messages forced in the movie. It's good. Next, Kathleen has managed to mess up the biggest money maker for Star Wars, toys. The 2019 financial report indicates that the decrease in comparable store sales reflected lower sales of Star Wars and Moana merchandise. Aw, oh, are you Rose Toys not selling? And that's for the whole year of 2019. The 2018 quarter one, which reported sales right after the release of The Last Jedi, also reported, lower income from licensing activities was driven by decreasing revenue from products based on Star Wars. No one is buying Star Wars toys. Yes, a phrase that I thought would never be said. Star Wars toys are not selling. In that same one, they report higher revenues from products based on Spider-Man. From Spider-Man alone. Not the whole MCU. Spider-Man alone. So yeah, Marvel was out selling Star Wars for toys. This is because they didn't make movies that gave the big middle finger to the fans and have good main characters that people want to buy toys of. And it's not because they're racist or sexist. It's because the characters are better. My final point is Star Wars Galaxy Edge. The amusement park that managed to stay open in Disneyland. The report says that there were unnecessary expenses added to Star Wars Galaxy Edge, which with context clues makes sense. But the statistics don't lie. According to Len Testa, president of Toying Plans, a subscription service that tracks wait times at Disney parks, crowds have been lower all around Disneyland since Galaxy Edge's debut on May 29 and it was even suggested to be replaced with an Aladdin-themed park. New reports are suggesting profits, which is good to hear, but this report is a year after Solo and The Last Jedi. People were a little more forgiving of Star Wars. They were hyping up for the rise of Skywalker, and I predict it doesn't make a ton of money this year. Marvel-themed lands have been announced, and makes sense. Marvel is more profitable for Disney than Star Wars. But since nothing is out yet, there's nothing to compare Galaxy's Edge to. But I would expect profits from the Marvel one. Star Wars fatigue isn't real. Marvel fatigue isn't either. We're not tired of Star Wars because there's too much. It's because there's no quality Star Wars. Marvel is making quality content and the fans aren't getting tired of it. 
Yeah, Marvel is on top. I never thought I would say that. All these things are comparable. The sales, the movies, and most importantly, the leaders. Marvel is in much better hands, and Star Wars is taking a much needed break. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing. We have a lot more content similar to this on the channel that you would also enjoy. Tell me what you think in the comments. Is Marvel on top? Is Star Wars dying? But that's all I have for today, so I will see you in the next one.